everyone! It's been a while. So much for uploading videos with any sort of regularity, right? Turns out, video editing is something I don't enjoy doing, like, at all, and it's hard to motivate myself to do something I find very boring and tedious. And life has been busy. I won't bore you with the details. But I wanted to make this video specifically because this piece, from Butch Hartman, was shared to a couple of the Discord servers I'm in, and it seems like talking about Butch Hartman is like one of the few things that will motivate me to slog through editing a video, so here we are. So there were a couple of things that caught my attention about the piece when I saw it. First, I actually think it's kind of cute. I don't know. I like the concept, and I actually do like the really zoomed out composition. Second, Butch is still using his very saturated colors with no mind towards any sort of color theory or unified palette, and it continues to look very bad. Third, and what I want to talk about today, is how Butch uses values. Or rather, how he doesn't. For those who don't know, values in art refers to the use of lightness and darkness within art, independent of color. That is, if you take any given piece and desaturate it until it's black and white, you are now looking at that piece's values. Why is value important? Because you can have two colors that are literally across the color wheel from each other, as different as can be, but if they have the same value, it's still going to lack contrast. This is important for making strong compositions and color palettes, and value can have a huge role in how readable your art is to people with certain types of colorblindness. That's not to say that your values have to be super contrasty all the time. Sometimes a sketch is just a sketch, or sometimes you just can't be fucked to care, and that's alright. But it's good to be cognizant of, because not only will it help you strengthen your skills, it's also literally an accessibility topic for a lot of people. By the way, an easy way to check your values is to make a layer that sits on top of all your other layers, fill it with black, and set it to hue. Then you can quickly turn that layer on and off to check values as you go. As you become really cognizant of values, you'll start to notice when they're strong or weak, even if the piece isn't desaturated. So going back to that piece by Butch, part of what struck me is that this might be part of the reason Butch uses such incredibly bright saturated colors with no apparent sense of color theory. Because he either doesn't know how or doesn't care to use value to create contrast, instead he must rely on color. This is especially noticeable if you get rid of those contrasting colors. Everything sort of blurs into one mid-tone gray. Danny is almost entirely lost. Now, this piece is definitely the most striking example of this problem in Butch's portfolio. I did a quick scroll through his Instagram and grabbed a few other pieces, and they're not quite as egregious as this one. At least one of them was even pretty good, at least in terms of value. Although that might be because this one was specifically in black and white from the get-go. But even when there's more value contrast to be found, there's not much intentional use of value. As an aside, again, this isn't to say that you must be intentionally using contrasty values to lead a viewer's eye 100% of the time. There are a lot of reasons not to do that, depending on the circumstances, and I'm actually becoming more and more a proponent of bucking many conventional art rules as we know them, and even the concept of improving one's art in general in favor of the pursuit of making art that brings joy to oneself. Don't feel like me critiquing Butch is a critique of anyone's habits in particular, I'm critiquing Butch partly specifically because he is, or at least he was, I don't really keep up with him to be honest, so very very cocky and arrogant about receiving critique from anyone seemingly less skilled or below him in some way, when he's actually got a pretty wide myriad of bad habits when you look at them through the lens of conventional art wisdom and the principles of art and design. Anyway, while I was going through Butch's Instagram, I found that he had redone that original piece that caught my attention, and to be honest, I like this one too. Even if I really liked the zoomed out composition of the original, zooming in here does give a better focus to our subjects, Danny and Sam, and I really like that everything's tilted on the diagonal to give a little more visual interest. But the values are still bad. When I saw the original piece, I decided to do a quick and lazy redraw of it with the express intention of trying to use values more intentionally than Butch did. Specifically, using the moon as a highlight to frame Danny and Sam's faces, having Danny and Sam themselves be the mid-range values, and then the sky being the darkest value. 
so I decided to try and do something similar with Butch's piece here. I isolated Danny, Sam, and the billboard and lowered their values so that they pop better against the bright moon while still being readable against the dark sky. Already the values are a lot stronger, I think, compared to before when you zoom out, Danny and Sam are a lot more immediately readable, and there's just more visual interest, I think. Next, and this is very subjective, I'm assuming there are a lot of people who won't agree with this step, but I put a gradient going up from the bottom and a little from the left of the piece. I did this because ultimately the billboard is not that important to the piece. It's there for context, but none of its information is vital to understanding the piece. So for me, I want it to be visually less important. And an easy way to do that is to make it a closer value to the sky. I didn't want it to fade away entirely, but in the sort of hierarchy of importance, Danny and Sam are at the top, and so they should be the ones to draw your eye, and contrast draws the eye. The gradient also helps to frame Danny and Sam a little more in the absence of any other framing devices. Like I said, maybe not everyone would agree with just slapping a gradient on there and calling it a day, but like, I'm not going to repaint the entire piece, and the gradient achieves what I was attempting to do, so I'm going with it. The last thing I did was actually lighten the entire piece somewhat, up the contrast even a little bit more, and attempt to fix the colors. Again, Butch uses such bright, saturated colors that they tend to go very muddy when any adjustments are made, and I wanted to try and unify the color palette a little more too. It's still not great, but I tried. Looking at them side by side, you can see how different the piece feels. I personally think it's much more effective because it still maintains contrast, but without everything feeling so similar value-wise. But what do you think? Where is your eye drawn? Do you like the original better? Would you do anything differently value-wise? For a little additional illustration, I isolated certain colors from each piece so we can look at their values without any other distractions. From the original piece, here you can see Danny's skin color in the middle, flanked by the two values used in the moon. If we desaturate them, we can see how close in value they are. If we compare that with my version, which granted has more variance in value within the moon and Danny's skin, but I tried to pick about the average of each, uh, we can see that it's much poppier. Even the contrast between Danny's skin and the dark value used in the moon, while not huge, is more substantial than in Butch's piece. My colors are also better and more cohesive, but we're not talking about that right now. Looking at the redone piece, I color picked the moon and then Danny's mane and highlight skin tone. Desaturating them shows that they are stronger and more contrasty than in the original, and credit where credit is due, I do think that shows. You can zoom out on the redone piece and Danny and Sam aren't lost so badly like in the original. So when I did my adjustments, it was with the intention to use values more intentionally to draw your eye towards Danny and Sam, but that did also make the overall values pop more, which I still think looks even better, personally, but you're free to decide for yourself. Anyway, that's all I really have to say this time. Not quite as much of a rant as the character design video, but I still wanted to talk about this because Butch Hartman is always fun to talk about, and this piece in particular, even though I do like it, is such a poignant example of why using values intentionally can really weaken or strengthen a piece. If you want to do some more research into values in art, I put some resources in the description. Values in general I found are so often overlooked, but in my mind they're like, top five most important aspects of art with regards to composition and readability. That's not to say that I'm always great at using them, of course, but they're good to keep in mind. So often I've found that if I'm having trouble with a piece, it can usually be traced back to my values being weak or wonky. I do have other topics I'd like to talk about, other videos I'd like to make, so we'll see if I can muster the motivation to do so despite video editing being so, 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 so boring. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, maybe.